Hi guys, you're welcome to a very special episode on your favorite business podcast show, Elevate Biz. And if you have been following through, you know that once I mention a special episode, it means I have a very interesting guest with me in the studio. Now for today, remember what to do on Elevate Biz. It is that one podcast show that shines a spotlight on thriving businesses, talent, and craft, especially here in the Southeast. For today, I have a game changer with me in the studio. Okay, I know that it is commonly said that Lagos is, you know, the entertainment capital of Nigeria, but I must say that people are doing incredibly things, incredible things rather, here in the Southeast, especially in Nollywood. Now, today's guest is an amazing filmmaker. He's a cinematographer and he does amazing things in Nollywood, okay? I am with the Oracle himself. He is Mr. Okechuku Oku, and I cannot wait to introduce him to you guys, okay? But before we do that, as we usually do, let's go on a brief commercial break. See you real soon. Hi, my name is uh, Okechuku Oku, the director of uh, Pure Sound and Visuals Technology, in the owners of Oracle Films TV. Oracle Films TV is a streaming platform, an SVOD streaming platform that specializes in African movies, no, production and uh, exhibition is par excellence, all produced right here in Inuma. Today I'm on Elevate Bees on Crisp TV to throw more light on what we do and how we do it. Stay tuned. Welcome back, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that short break, okay? Because I did too. As I said earlier on, I am with a very special guest with me in the studio today. So ladies and gentlemen, if your hands are not too busy and your smile is plastered across your face like mine, please give it up for Mr. Okechuku Oku. You're welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you are welcome. You're welcome, sir. I'm finally <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> ah, me too. I'm glad. Though. I almost thought you were not going to show up, sir. But then I told my audience that no, I will do everything. I am my team, rather, I will do everything to make sure that an icon like you is it elevate this. So it's lovely to have you here. I'm glad Hope to you feel be here. great. I'm glad to be here. Hope you feel great. Yeah, I'm I'm good. <laughs> well, first up, before we go into the business of the day, I would like to um offer and express my sincere condolences on the current loss of your dad. From our heart and you know the rest of our team we're really sorry on that That's yeah fine. thank god true thank you but then on the brighter note too i would also like to offer you your flowers for your just completed project strength okay <laughs> i mean i'm glad i was part of you know the whole thing and i saw how the whole movie went it was amazing as usual thank you <laughs> so mm. here are your flowers they're invisible but <laughs> <your flowers. laughs> yeah. yeah all right then so let's get into the business of today mm, i must say that what you do, especially mm. in Nollywood, is mm. mind blowing and it is phenomenal because here, you know, in the Southeast, we don't really have much people that are willing to go deep and actually tell the story, you know, of what goes down here. We just have different, different notions and different reasons why we think that these things do not really strive here in the Southeast. But mm. then you have been steadfast if that's the word you've been you know at it for a really really long time and you've received a lot of awards you've received recognition to an extent and you've really encouraged people to you know see the reasons why they should they should not just ignore things here so um i was also you know i also wanted to mention black rose too, which is doing really well netflix and also string the movie so i must say it's all great but then again seeing how you really break down your story to make sure that everybody is able to really feel whatever it is that's going on in the movie. I must say that one thing I'm fascinated with is your creative process. And I think I would like to start with that. So tell us what your creative process is like. What is that? How exactly is it for you when you want to take on a new project? What would you say that, that experience is like for you? Okay. First things first. Um, before I go into any project at all, yeah, I look at the story. I'm someone who connects deeply to any project that I want to embark on. So I look at the story and I look at how does it touch me as a person, as a filmmaker, and what will it be able to do? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, so many people shoot films for different reasons. Some people make films for prim primarily money. Yeah. You know, they just want to make money, so they don't give a, uh, a damn 
about what, what, you know the outcome yeah, so is just the money w- that's good to understand it's yeah. for every any business person but then every filmmaker has to define what kind of filmmaker they want to be and, yeah. and that person that really loves stories that are kind of on the social side that will address a lot of social ills yeah. and probably have some good moral story you no know, moral to it uh, so I look at that first, and then uh, that informs me in my decision making. Like, who do I use? What kind of persons, cast do I need to bring on board to be able to interpret this story perfectly well? So, do you write uh, them and see them in your mind's eyes? I don't write stories. Okay, um, pardon me for that. <laughs> pardon me, you guys. <laughs> no, you do a lot of things. So, is it just say, oh, you also I don't write stories? Write, but yeah. I, I have this thing about identifying really good stories yeah, when I see that's, one. That's yes. So, and when I see stuff like I see good in stories that are even not really properly written, once I look at that story and I holistically see where the d- direction of the the story or the writer is going, because there are so many things in the story yeah. aside just having a story. You have to look at um, well, what uh, the, for me it's first of all the dialogue. To understand okay uh, you can have a story and you weaken it with bad dialogue to understand but first of all you look at what is this story about first and then we can now start fixing the rest start okay. changing things to, okay let's look at this direction let's go this direction and the end of the day is about making the best out of that story yeah then of course um every other uh, decision you have to make with respect to how do i shoot this how do i uh, look, um, how do I make the technical aspect of it to also not take attention away from the story itself? Yeah. Because there's a way you pay attention to your technicals, it uh, the, you lose the story along the way. Yeah. So the technical is supposed to actually make the audience focus more on the story. So we try to look at that. What best do we do? What are the locations we're going to use? What are the costumes we're going to use to make sure that people focus on the characters rather than distractions around the character to yeah. understand so yeah i perfectly get that yeah. i perfectly get it um one thing i wanted to actually highlight when i talked about you writing stories was like i wanted to know what when you cast mm. when you look at a story and mm. then you want to now mm. as a director yes yeah. i know you also play a role in casting now mm. too. so do you just look at it and like, in your mind's eye i feel like this person can actually yeah. fit into this role yeah Simple. so that's, that's it. how it is yeah that's that's it for me <laughs> okay i'm not that's part much of, the of um Mm, audition person okay but i encourage actors to i mean upcoming actors to put out uh monologues just yeah. share your monologues i watch every monologue that comes to me every okay. monologue so okay. it's in my mind i see you i see what you can do so when i'm reading a script i'm like okay there's this person i yeah, watched I think I'm this person this. watched you understand yeah. yeah so it's primarily that so actors should put out monologues watch it is in my mind when i'm reading a script you know, I'm like, okay, this person is going to fit into this role. This person okay. fit into this role. That's for p- sometimes projects that I handle personally, or I produce or we produce personally. Okay. But when you're working for other clients, it's a different ball game. Okay. The person is uh, looking at, okay, if I'm making this movie um, and I want to get revenue out of this movie, you have to start looking at where is it going to? Okay. What's my marketing audience? True. So when you decide on that, what's your market, what your market audience is, then that helps you decide, okay, uh, of course, you have to limit your upcoming artist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, you don't want to have too much now. Yeah, yeah you, not that you, you, don't, you don't have, because if you put, there's a good in having upcoming artists in your film, is yeah. that it actually reduces predictability to the film, because there's this thing about when you see people that you are familiar with, okay. you already know where the story is going. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. So it's good to bring in new faces that are really good, so people don't know what to expect from them. From them. Do you True. But then for market purposes, you need people that can Happy face. draw yeah. the audience okay. you know, to the okay. film. That's true. That's, mm. that's really nice to actually mm. hear. So I think um, now we should delve into your business journey because I know that, mm. <laughs> I know you've done a lot of things. Mm. I won't say you just strictly do one particular thing because I know you started out with music. Mm. I know you, you are interested in editing on the side because I know you also received mm. an award. Not on the side. Okay, yes. <laughs> That's basically. a major see, part of the process. See? Yes. So I know you do a lot of things, but then mm. let's really talk about how your journey started. Tell us about how your journey started. I started as a singer. Wow. Yeah, did the that irony. for about 20 years. 
Wow. <laughs> 20. I still sing small. <laughs> <laughs> I started, singer, started as a singer and then producer. And I had this amazing a cappella group back in the days called The Psalmist. Aww. And then I, I've lost count on the projects, you know, the, uh, I've been part of music process. But some of the people that n- knew me those days as uh, someone who is uh, an icon in the music industry are quite surprised mm-hmm. now that I'm doing film. But the thing that I've left music, no, music is still there. I still have my recording studio now. So I've done a lot of jobs, uh, produced so many artists, um, um, sponsored so many artists, trained so many producers. Uh, I don't want to name names. I'm sure they, they all know themselves. Yeah. And I've also had to run a recording company where we sign up artists, where we, you know, people come produce. Uh, oh, yeah. That's so, a lot. <laughs> I know I've done, that's I've, a I've lot. gone through the, I've gone through so many studios, right from a studio engineer while singing, gone okay. through studio engineer, down to owning my own studio, then selling it, opening another studio oh. until I finally, after about 20 years career in music, I let it go. <laughs> no, <Aww. laughs> was it that you you developed this newfound I've, love for movies, or you I, just like let me try my hand on something? I, I else? was born in an artist in an art family, you mm-hmm. know, drawing films. So while I was doing music, I was doing music videos. Okay, you know, so music video drew me closer to cinematography. Okay, and I loved cinema. I loved the art of being able to create. You know, look at something through the light and everything, and you look at how brilliant and excellent it looks on screen, exactly. and what and, how it, makes, kind of and how it makes people feel. <laughs> do you understand? Yeah. So gradually, that drew me towards film. Yeah. I started out as a cinematographer in film. I usually get the, get my cameras, go out, shoot things for my own personal consumption, okay. and then I got a, some directors come walk to my office and look at it. I'm like, like it. this is this looks really good. It, can do film. I said, okay, if you guys invite me, I will. You know, so from there, I started, you know, gradually getting into film. And then I took the test for the screening for uh, the Director's Guild, which I passed. Okay. But I didn't start practicing until after five years because I needed to get more knowledge. I didn't want to jump into directing. I wanted to really understand what, it was about. what the industry was about. Okay. So, and then see all the, because I, I then see some Nigerian films that I don't like. There are some that I really like. So I want to know why this is better than this, why this is good. And and we're we're still in the learning process. It doesn't stop. True. But uh, with having gotten quite a number, you know, to an extent in acquiring that knowledge, my first film got seven awards in America. First film. Wow. Yeah, so. Wow. And I said, okay. I think we're going really I think we're easy. going somewhere. <laughs> we are really, really going somewhere. I, I, think we're going I mean, somewhere. I really like how open you are to <laughs> these things. You didn't just narrow your you, you are quite receptive to learning and I feel yeah. like it's one truth. So that the, the journey, I like learning things, you know. I like okay, oh okay, this this is important. Yeah. And it's not like I like doing it myself all the time. I would rather have people work yeah. to work with, but sometimes in the absence of some of those creative uh sides in the in the industry, I I don't limit myself to, okay, if I, if I don't get someone, I won't do it. I say, okay, if I don't have someone available, okay. I'll have to learn it. Do you understand? And so what that did currently is that I have this holistic approach to filmmaking. Okay. If I'm making a movie, a size, being a director, being a, a, a cinematographer. Okay. Uh, of course, if you are doing cinematography, you have to learn lighting. Uh, Very having important. That, you have to learn lighting. And I also edit all my films. I started editing music videos, so I... From there, I started editing films. I mean, I really downplayed that. Uh, so so I, like, I edit all basically. my films. Wow. All my films. I edit wow. all my films. Yes, I can see that I had to also learn color grading. And then I saw the need to do something that most people don't do, which is sound design. Yeah. So I also apply sound design. And I, but recently, I've started getting some really good hands, like my film score in my, my film score in all my films. I okay. brought this amazing guy okay. in your beats that is fantastic. Uh, so we rub off on each other. He knows fully well my background as a music person. So we share ideas on where. So what that does is kind of like open up the world to you. Yeah. On, you know, you, are, you don't have any restriction, no limits to the ideas True. or to the direction where you want your film to go. You know, so it helps you, it helps you keep nice. your film in check. Really, really nice, mm. actually.
really nice. So mm-hmm. I know that you are the creative director at Oracle Film. I think mm-hmm. it's time for us to talk about that. And then mm-hmm. Oracle Film TV is a streaming platform too where people mm-hmm. can access the movies yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. And then your name, so people call you Oracle. So mm-hmm. I cannot just ignore it. You have to tell us about Oracle Film. Okay. Know, just a bit. Okay, how did know? Oracle Film start? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was doing music, mm-hmm. I had some of my friends who I, you know, do you know do the, the music stuff with who knew me very well as someone who explores different training and try to master them like yeah. i didn't start off as a sound engineer i was just a singer but i ended up producing i ended up sound engineer i ended up i built my studio and no one built it for me wow. do you understand so it's like you know anything, that is why they call you anything legend. i want to learn <laughs> I don't just learn it on the surface. I try to be very good at it. So he he threw the word around like Oracle, Oracle. You know, I was like a, you know, it was just one of those names. Yeah. So when I decided to leave music, you know, and go into film, I I needed to rebrand, and what name to choose? <laughs> so, if not. So I said, okay, let me just Oracle, Oracle, and then the name took over. Took over my name. People didn't even most people at that time because I had to move to Lagos. Most people at that time did not even know my real name. Yeah. You know, so I did that for two years, and then I realized that no Lagos isn't for me. Oh. I came back. Why even getting back to that? <laughs> oh, okay, let's let's ease into this gradually. <laughs> so I came back yeah. and I decided to set up a production company, and I called it uh, the Oracle Films. Mm. And that gave birth after years of having that experience in producing and everything. I saw the need for us to have a place, a platform where. You know, because I, 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 there's this challenge in the industry where you make good films and you you find it difficult to even show it yeah. in so many places. Distribution. Yeah, where I feel it deserves to be shown. So we set up this platform, streaming platform, where we put those films so that people can easily access them. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's, a, really that's nice. a short story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you guys, you know where you can actually access these movies if you want to, you know, watch them. Wow, what you do at Oracle Films is really, really impressive. Mm. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to just produce movies and then to have a streaming platform to also help distribute the movies too. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's a really great fit for Oracle Films. So do you want to tell us about some of the movies that they can find there? They can find there? Okay, uh, we, we, we don't exclusively produce um, all our films for Oracle Films. Oracle Films um, is a production company of its own. So they handle some of their own content. We also produce for other people. So... But the, we also, in Oracle Films, um, are open to any film produced by anybody in the East that is of the quality that we want to understand. Another opportunity has dropped in here. You <laughs> so, see, just so, dashing for free free opportunities. Like so <laughs> in Oracle Films, we have uh, Black Rose. Mm-hmm. We have, um, that's streaming Black Rose. We have uh, Levi. Then we ha- one of my faves. <laughs> then we have a couple of short films, like okay. 45, 40 minutes short films, like My Daughter, Freddie and Mary, Three Sides of a Coin, Away. Wow. Away, so if I produce yeah. like short films, then I could, I could approach? Yeah. Once it's good, of good enough a quality that we want on the platform. Wow. So we try to, uh, what we do is to bridge the gap between the likes of uh, contents on Netflix and YouTube. We don't produce exactly what What's kind of things on YouTube. Produced, yeah. If if our films don't make it to Netflix or Amazon Prime, which yeah. are actually seen as the number one top uh, platforms in the world, then it will go to Oracle Films. <laughs> so, okay. So that's it. that's where the, that, those quality of films go to if they don't make it to the bigger platforms. So that's anything on impressive. on Oracle Films is fantastic. It's high quality. That's very impressive. Yeah. You guys, so please, I hope you've heard that. Okay, if you, I, I just said an opportunity is open to those of you that are interested in a platform that can actually help to boost your career. And not just that, for those of you that love really nice movies, not just movies that you can find anywhere, Oracle Films TV is also your go-to place for that. Yeah, yeah so let's dive into the serious, serious business. You mm-hmm. know, I feel like if we don't talk about this, they will have not spoken about anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. As you said earlier on, you... You were in Lagos, I mean, at some point in your career. Mm. You stayed for some time and realized that, okay, years. this is, yeah, this is not something it, it, like that. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> As there, I for can't me, just For imagine. me, though, it worked for so many people, but yeah. it didn't work for me. Yeah, but then it's, it's, it's interesting because a lot of people believe that if you are not there, you have not started anything yet. Mm. Like I said earlier on, I know that people 
if I'm not just people, actually, a lot of the things when it comes to entertainment actually stems from that place, Lagos State. So I feel like maybe there are some things that we're not doing right down here. And that's why I want you to actually shed more light on. Like, what are those things from your experience, both there and here? What are those things you think that... Okay, you know, I can only speak of my own personal experience. Which um, is totally fine. Yeah, yeah, so there's a reason why Lagos didn't work for me. Lagos is obviously the center of entertainment in Nigeria. Yeah, you can't take that away. Yeah. And for obvious reasons, the population and major companies having their center in Lagos. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the population, basically. So there is this thing about people who come in from different countries identifying with Lagos first yeah. before any other state. But aside um, the marketability of the, of the, there's a market aspect of our industry, yeah. which of course you might probably need a Lagos if your market is targeted or Nigerian, targets nigerian audience targeted okay um uh, the reason why i said lagos wasn't for me is because i was thinking in a more global scale okay and if you are thinking in that direction it doesn't matter where you are wow yeah it doesn't matter that's where you are. power you guys please bring your note and your page to be writing this <laughs> and this knowledge cannot pass it does it what matter it doesn't matter so i saw Inugu as a place where i can sit and uh, produce my films quietly and nicely. Enugu is a Quietly. place. Yeah. I'm interested in that word. <laughs> uh, Enugu is a place where you can produce uh, things a lot cheaper than in Lagos. And being a place I grew up, I was, you know, it, a lot of places were more or easily accessible to me than having to go do it in, in Lagos. Mm. And so, yeah, it's a place where, um, I mean, Enugu has produced so many great names in the industry who started you know from Enugu and then True. spread out spread True. out from here but I'm I'm just the person that refused to leave you know aside having you know having to stay here for my family I also love working in Enugu because uh I've tr it's not like I've not worked other places I worked in Lagos worked, yeah. uh, worked in US worked in uh, UK worked in South Africa worked in um um uh, Freetown Sierra Leone wow love <laughs> so, wow that's a lot but I love Enugu Okay. I love Enugu. So I've been able to produce all my major successful films from Enugu. Okay. So if you are thinking in a holistic sense, mm -hmm. you know, your audience, your audience can be anywhere in the world, then it doesn't really matter where you stay. For me, I chose Enugu. Yeah, that, that's, mm. that's key, actually. It doesn't mm. matter where you no, are. No, it doesn't matter. But then again, <laughs> I'm really trying to like narrow things down to Nollywood. Okay. Yeah, so like I, I, I don't know if it's an Eastern thing mm. or... Or would you say that Nollywood is not as unified as it ought to be? Would you say that it's thriving more in some parts of Nigeria than in some parts? The, the problem Nollywood has is, is, is a national problem. A national it's not just, problem. Uh, yeah, but although the eastern, has, yeah, the eastern part has its own peculiar issues. Yeah, yeah so, I would like to highlight some of those the, peculiar yeah, the eastern issues. The part, uh, I, I think there is a lot of um, mm, unhealthy competition. Inhale. happening in, in the east mm -hmm. you understand where we should be channeled channeling our competition towards uh making our works creatively excellent do you understand yeah. we we're more personal on the challenges and and that's not healthy for the industry okay yeah. is it is it an Igbo man thing <laughs> <laughs> you know no, no, well, <laughs> in a way i i, I think yeah in a way so that means there's no solution for us there is <laughs> Those who see it as a problem okay. are the solution. Okay. Once you see something as a problem, that means you are meant to fix it. Okay. Because some people don't even see it as a problem. Do you mm -hmm. understand? So there are a few of us who sit back and say, no, we're going to get it right. And we, they say Igbos can't work together. I've always been working together with my entire crew is all Igbo guys. Do you understand? Basically. And is having this sense of inclusion. Yeah. Making sure that everybody sees sees what you're doing as their own thing, and don't be too personal. Don't try to, you know, Personalized use things. people and you're drawing things only from them. Only for and uh, yeah, once you're doing that, then there's a problem. So does it mean that this doesn't happen in the south? Is this, is this it the happens a little difference? bit uh, other place, but they have an advantage. I mean, looking at their film and how fast their industry is going and okay. how fast they are pushing their the language and everything, you you will see that there is a uh, some people might think is a takeover but it's not they have everybody's they are focused on their arts and they are pushing it collectively do you understand so okay and that's something that is missing here where that collectiveness is not so strong so and it's really affecting the industry 
you know, knowing fully well that the industry actually birthed from from here. You know, but we are not strong. We are not really that united in, in pushing the creative and the excellence uh, of uh, that we should be promoting. You know. Yeah. Well, was there something that actually made your own journey a bit easier? Like you deciding now I want to stay in the East mm. and build what I'm building. Was there something that you would say made your... Because I know that if you want to bring it down to a personal level, mm. let's just talk about maybe someone here in the east that is really trying to advance his or her career when mm. it comes to the nollywood industry or maybe he's interested in directing and stuff like that and everybody's saying you can't do it here you can't get it here you know it's not it's, is there something that you would say made your journey a bit easier or is it just you know a personal um a belief system i, I would i would think it's a belief system okay. <laughs> i think it's personal because like I said, people who leave Lagos leave Lagos for for a genuine reason, and most of them, most of the time, they end up successful outside in okay. Do you yeah. understand? Uh, but I'm I'm the proof that you still can make it from anywhere, because I didn't leave. Although some people arguably have said that if I left, I would have been way bigger. Well, <laughs> who knows? I mean, they were always talking. <laughs> well, yeah. who knows? But um, is it possible to be here and make it? Yes. It is. There are things that we can do to improve it here to actually add that marketability. Yeah. You know, that market side to improve it. And but then don't I don't think it's smart to be narrow minded when you are looking at markets. Okay. You have to be you have to be more global. Don't even think like or think of the whole world. Yeah. I mean, speaking yes, of markets and distribution though, before we get into ways to actually improve the system mm-hmm. here in the Southeast, I, I don't know if I'm wrong to say uh distribution. In Nigeria generally and Nollywood, mm. how would you actually like what would you actually say about it when it comes to distributing movies? Would you say that there's maybe because we are of different ethnic groups or ethnicity here in Nigeria, some movies will probably appeal to some more than some. Mm-hmm. So it's making Nollywood not to be as unified as it ought to be when it comes to because Nollywood stands for the whole of Nigeria mm. now, yeah. It's not supposed to be a Lagos or an Eastern thing. So what what exactly would you say? Did you about watch that? Apocalypto? It's not that old movie, where they were. <laughs> I think I did actually. It's not English. Yeah, it wasn't actually. It was a different language, right? Yes. Did you it's watch uh, Passion of the Christ? Yes. It's not English either. Mm-hmm. So I don't think language is a problem. I think it's the approach, the, the your approach to filmmaking. If you shoot any language and you have everyone in mind mm-hmm. when filming that, it helps you interpret that in a different way. Look at the actors more. You pay attention on the actors being more artistic, do you understand, yes, than being more a uh, narrative, okay. do you understand? Because when you put all your energy on the language, you lose people in the way. So, yeah, because of the way we're Besides growing, language, culture too, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so because of okay. the way we are a bit culture-minded, it's mm-hmm. kind of like not allowing our films to spread across different other cultures. But there's nothing wrong with... If you want to tell a story in a specific kind of culture, people who love good films, as long as you do it well, we still appreciate okay. that culture. Yeah. You understand? So there's no one culture that is better than the other. Mm. It's how you tell your story. If True. you do it well, everyone is going to embrace it. So, True. And I think there's actually the power of storytelling to be yeah. able to encompass So what happens is that too. sometimes when we want to tell our own culture, we don't see it as serious as we do the English. Understand. So we tend to play it down, play down the budget, play down everything. Yes. And it's affected the way people, the marketers or the distributors see our films. When you bring your film to some of these streaming platforms, they say Igbo film and they watch it, it's always very yeah. cheap and very, you know, do you understand? So they place that value like that. But if you bring one that is absolutely well done, they'll, play, they'll increase the value, do you understand? True. So it, it doesn't matter what language, it matters how you do it. How well you do it, in a stance. I mean, so. living in bondage made waves of course, everywhere. Of course, it was an Igbo movie of course. when it first so came out. So, that, uh, yeah, I yeah, definitely there you agree go, with that. <laughs> I agree with me. Yes, definitely, so, I agree with that. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, we'll soon go on a short break, though. But I think before then, let's just talk about ways you think that it can be improved. Ways you think Nollywood can be improved generally, especially in the southeast. Let's really now we dance to the southeast because that's what the whole podcast is about. <laughs> what do you think we can do better here? I think I've I've kind of like mentioned pointers to several things that can be done. First of all, is that we have to stop the unhealthy competition. Yes. To understand right. and look at it in a more less like appreciate what we do each uh, individually, but appreciate in such a way that 
it's more unifying. But this is starting from the directors now, not even the actors. It's from everybody. Mm. It's from everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's from everybody. Okay. Everybody plays a major, a major role. Like, to understand, there's too much division, too much, um, and we have to understand that uh, the people that watch our films are all they're, they're watching us in a way. To understand, and that divisiveness is very apparent, very glaring. To understand, very yeah. So it's not really, really helping. That's one of it. Then the next thing is something I think the government needs to do. Um, improve on their working environment. Uh, there were times when Inugu was number one. Everybody comes to Inugu to film. All of a sudden, really? yeah. All of a sudden, people start, started leaving. Asaba now took over <laughs> at some point. <laughs> it's because people go where it's easy for them, where they're accepted, to understand, where it's easy for them to work. Recently- okay, This is not just about location. This is also about the government too. Yeah, that area. yeah. Okay. For security is one thing. If, if you're kidnapping people every day, they won't shoot there anymore. True. <laughs> you understand? So. If you have security, there, there were times when Inugu was pretty, you no, know, you can Peaceful. go into any bush and shoot. You can't do that now, do you understand? So once that happens, once you provide those basic things, security, ease of movement, so that now in Inugu, 10 o'clock, everybody's home. And sometimes that's the right time to film because you have less distraction, less noise. And if you can't move around, then that becomes a problem, do you understand? So, yeah. And then uh, the next thing is, uh, that, might be, that might be more serious or that in pol enacting policies that actually that one is a, is a general nigerian problem yeah? enacting mm -hmm. policies that, that actually yeah that better. actually help us maximize our mm -hmm. profit in in a way because when people don't when people feel like they're entitled to get your film for free you won't be able to That's make you won't be able to There's make no money yeah mm -hmm. you'll be able to make money to make more you understand so it, and that happens because our, our copyright laws are very very weak very very weak i mean they're there just on paper yeah hardly very very weak it. so if you improve on those things yeah you're gonna not just in uh, in Inu, but everywhere in the world everywhere in nigeria filmmaking will be more appreciating more appreciated and then the value i mean the value and virtue is is some somewhat uh proportional yeah yeah so thank once you once that value system <laughs> increases of course that's why sometimes you look at the same people that watched our films they have tend to have more value for for, it, for foreign films yeah. more value for foreign so that they will be willing to even pay more so uh that that's needs to that actually. needs to work on yeah but it's it's seriously improving looking at what happened what's happening currently in our cinemas you see that some nigerian films are really really doing the numbers to understand and yeah so that's actually. it but the problem is that from this side we don't have much films in the cinemas I understand and that is because uh the lagos market and you know they are begin to key into the the long-term side of the business and how to invest heavy and how to look at a more uh, more robust marketing uh outfit yeah. you understand but here we are all what we do here is once there is one particular area where people sell, everybody floods, everybody floods, everybody floods that, that area and yeah. then water it down. We don't look at other different avenues Channels, to yeah. generate. So, but I don't think in that sense. So what I do is I'm, when, I, when I'm making a film, I'm looking at the highest level because it will trickle down. Do you understand? Definitely. It will still trickle down. Uh, so if we improve on that, then that will help uh, this side. Thank you so, so much, mm -hmm. Mr. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys, I hope you've had so much to learn because if you'd not watched this interview from the beginning, I don't even know what to tell you, Seth, but don't worry. It's, it's a, there are more chances for you to actually do that. So he said a lot. He spoke about Oracle Films, spoke about, you know, what Nollywood is going through and ways it can actually be improved. And definitely, we still have a few more gist to actually, you know, expand on. But then again, before we do that, let's go on a short commercial break. See you real soon.
back, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that short break. Because I did too. I'm very sure that Mr. OK will tell you how he gave him very big chicken and salad with a fresh juice. Mr. OK, would you like to tell them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you say any other thing other than yes, uh, <laughs> this interview will end. Okay. <laughs> All right, they they will learn more about it. See, smiling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the short break, though. Yeah. There was enough time for you to yeah, stretch, 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 stretch my mind. Yeah, that's actually nice. So we've spoken at length about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I think now we should just you know end our conversation with trying to understand or key into the future plans of your um business. Or for example, let's just come from the angle of young people now that are actually interested in keying into this line of business like how can they what are the things that you can actually do for them okay um with respect to oracle film still yeah. because that's actually the platform that um if it gets to where of you know where we intend for it to get to yeah my, no seeing when i saw the vision of oracle films i saw a possible netflix alternative Nigeria. based here <laughs> in enugu but Enugu's so big, yeah, based here in Enugu, but so big that it can be felt across Africa. And that is something I cannot do alone. So True. what are we doing? Um, f- at this early stage, we're just simply trying to build the tech for the platform okay. and get uh, our content uh, level up a little bit. But while doing that, we've been able to uh, create a process where we take in skilled individuals in different fields okay and even Please put your ear down for this one Make sure you <laughs> and different <laughs> people who may not necessarily know exactly what they want they just want to be a part of the process yeah they come in and then see what we are doing and they will definitely they will automatically pick one department that they feel they are more connected to okay. i mean knowing fully well knowing, having seen the history or learned about the history of my very person from music and uh, everything I've been able to learn, the brain is capable of knowing so many things at the same time. Yeah. So while I know that a lot of young people want to be in a hurry to do something that ends them, you know, quick cash to oh, understand. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, our industry is something that is a bit more sustaining because when everything fails, you still have something at least to Selena, keep you yeah. doing, keep you working and enjoying, you know, because this thing, that is satisfaction that you have when you're creating something and at the end of the day, you see people happy. You see that make people happy. I guess that's and why it takes time to actually grow because of our sustainability yes, in the long yes, run. So yes, it's an industry that um, <laughs> that um, encompasses so many professionals. We have, uh, aside the script writer, we have the director, the um, a producer, associate producer, uh, um, we have the AD, first AD, second AD. On the camera side, you have the cinematographer, you have the camera assistant, you have the camera operator, you have then, you, you, you have come to light, gaffer, best boy. So there are so many costume. Yes, yeah, the, the, the industry is so big. Oh, you understand? Incredible. There's, yeah. there's something for someone as long as you're creative. You understand? So you, anyone who really loves being a part of any particular angle yeah. can do that and still do other other things you know so so we are trying to create a place where it will be easy for people to come in be a part of the process do what they love and still earn good living for themselves true Uh, at the end of the day if we if we have um, uh, a user users up to about say 10,000 20,000 then we are we are are doing great we're in business (laughs) y'all They were doing great. Business, yeah. and, uh, the good thing about it is that it's it's uh, a business where you have people working who feel like they are family. You understand? They are doing something that they love and they are having fun and they are being rewarded as well doing it. So True. it's it's growing and and it's uh, so the opportunity is is there for anyone who wants to come in. And there's and this then, long yardstick for growth. I mean, yeah. you can never stay stagnant. Of course, actually. of course. You can never stay. Stagnant. And we're growing. Just, this, uh, just a year ago, new. we are still struggling with tech. Now and I believe we have one nice of the best cool. tech. We have one of the best infrastructure yeah. for our platform. So I should really visit that site. It's so smooth. Yeah, <laughs> it's so slick. Yeah. It is actually. <laughs> yeah. So, so what are the possible plans for future advancements? What should we be expecting from Oracle Films? Um, of course, so many films, so many films. We in future we are going to have to um probably start filming in different parts of africa not just mm, in the country yes <laughs> so we are thinking of uh, 
okay, we're going to be, because it's actually a platform where we want to, we want people, the whole world to see the best of Africa, yeah. not just Nigeria. So we are looking at expanding, you know, shoot some of our films in, uh, I, I can't wait to shoot in like the falls in Zambia yeah. and, you know, the rest of all those places, get their own filmmakers to be part of the process and have it released on, on Oracle Films, you understand? So, mm-hmm. so that when people think of, okay, where can I watch the best of whatever Africa has to offer? Can think of you Oracle. can think of Oracle Films. Yeah. And that's it. That's the plan. Understand? That's that's a lot. And that is amazing. I feel like it's something that we should really key into and mm-hmm. definitely help. Well, the most important thing is it must be based in Enugu. And that's <laughs> the best part. <laughs> that's the best part. Yes. Guys. That's why this is on Elevate Keys. I mean, did you see that? I guess you saw it. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, we're about to wrap things up now. I guess we should just conclude with a word or two for that young star that's just sitting down there and just you know feeling discouraged by how things are especially here in the east i feel like you have a a word or two for them (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) nigeria don't be a cbo but we are still there and you need to find something that you love doing do you understand something that makes you happy that's the first thing what is it that makes you happy that you will do even if you don't have so much you still love doing it trust me if you put your focus on that and look at different ways do your 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 um your research in that particular thing you're doing you will find a way there's definitely a way for that thing to set you up on life. a very high pedestal even um, on your door this if you find the strength if you, yes, if you really love because i have uh, being uh opportune to experience starting from the very lowest Watch. and on anything i want to learn just start from the lowest and before i know it um i've become one of the biggest names in that particular field yeah and so it's it's if you learn something and you're really really so good at it people will come looking for you wherever you are wherever they are they will stink up because your work is what speaks for you so yeah your yeah. work is what speaks for so, you. Write it down. I've been telling you, write all this thing down. <laughs> so I know people are in a hurry. Yes, you got in a hurry to make money. But uh, what sometimes the thing that sustains you the most is the thing that you you build the foundation so for. you understand the nitty gritty. You know how, you know the process of how you grew up to that level. So you have a very firm, firm foundation. That's what stands the test of time. Yes, that is what. If you build a house on a very uh, weak foundation, it's going to fall. So build it on something very strong. It's gonna last. Thank you so yeah. much, Mr. Okay, thank you. It's been a pleasure hearing mm. from the Oracle himself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so so much for coming on the show. Thanks. My absolute pleasure. Yeah. yeah pleasure so mine. you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Elevate Biz. There's so much knowledge that you can actually key into on this particular episode, especially if you are interested in the world of entertainment, Nollywood here in Nigeria and even beyond because we're not just talking about Nigeria now, we're going global, you guys. So please make sure you watch this episode, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you call all of your loved ones to actually watch this particular episode. And do not forget that Elevate Biz is open to all forms of, you know, partnership, sponsorship, and of course you can place your ad on the show so that we get to know what you do as a business, as a company, or even as a brand. So do not forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms. And of course, follow Oracle Film, follow Oracle TV, of course. To Film get more TV. Film TV, yes. <laughs> to get more information on any new mind-blowing movie, of course. So please, you guys, I remain your host, Ndulu Ejuan, and until we come your way next time, this remains your favorite business podcast show, Elevate Biz. Have a lovely day ahead, you guys. Bye.
Yeah, that that's mm-hmm. that's key actually. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter where you no, are. It doesn't matter. But then again, <laughs> I'm really trying to like narrow things down to Nollywood. Okay. Yeah. So like I I, I don't know if it's an Eastern thing mm-hmm. or or would you say that Nollywood is not as unified as it ought to be? Would you say that it's thriving more in some parts of Nigeria than in some parts? The the problem Nollywood has is is, is a national problem. A it's not just uh, yeah, but although the eastern has yeah, the eastern part has its own peculiar issues. Yeah. Yeah, so I would like to highlight some of those the, peculiar yeah, the issues. The eastern then. part, uh, I th- I think there is a lot of um, mm, unhealthy competition unhealthy. happening in, in the east. Mm-hmm. You understand where we should be channeled channeling our competition towards uh, making our works creatively excellent. Do you understand? Yeah. We we are more personal on the challenges and, and that's not healthy for the industry. My first film got seven awards in America. First film. Wow. Uh, so wow. And I said, okay, 
I think we're going. Really I think we're going somewhere. <laughs> we are really, really going uh, somewhere. I think in Oracle Films, we have uh, Black Rose. Mm -hmm. We have um, that's streaming Black Rose. We have uh, Levi. Then uh, we one we of my faves. <laughs> Then we have a couple of short films, like okay. 45, 40 minutes short films, like My Daughter, Freddie and Mary, Three Sides of a Coin, Away. Wow. Away, so if I produce yeah. like short films, then I could, I could approach? Yeah. Once it's good, of, good enough a quality that we want on the platform. Wow. So we try to, uh, what we do is to bridge the gap between the likes of uh, content on Netflix and YouTube. If our films don't make it to Netflix or Amazon Prime, which yeah. are actually seen as the number one top uh, platforms in the world, then it will go to Oracle Films. I love Enugu. So I've been able to produce all my major successful films from Enugu. Mm -hmm. So if you are thinking in a holistic sense, mm -hmm. you know, your audience, your audience can be anywhere in the world, then it doesn't really matter where you stay. For me, I chose Enugu. So the, the journey, I like learning things, you know, I like, okay, oh, okay, this, this is important. Yeah. And it's not like I like doing it myself all the time. I would rather have people work yeah. to work with, but sometimes in the absence of some of those creative uh, sides in the, in the industry, I, I don't limit myself to, okay, if I, if I don't get someone, I won't do it. I say, okay, if I don't have someone available, okay. I'll have to learn it. Do you understand? And so what that did,
leave music, you know, and go into film. I, I needed to rebrand. And what name to choose? <laughs> so, if not. So I said, okay, let me just Oracle, Oracle. And then the name took over, took over my name. People didn't even, most people at that time, because I had to move to Lagos, most people at that time did not even know my real name. Yeah. You know? So I did that for two years. And then I realized that no, Lagos isn't for me. Okay, uh, we, we, we don't exclusively produce um, all our films for Oracle Films. Okay. Oracle Films um, is a production company of its own, so they handle some of their own contents. We also produce for other people. Okay. So, but the, we also, in Oracle Films, um, are open to any film produced by anybody in the East that is of the quality that we want to understand another opportunity has dropped yeah. you see <laughs> so, just dashing so. for free free opportunity <laughs> So yeah, it's a place where, um, I mean, Enugu has produced so many great names in the industry who started 
you know, from Enugu and then True. spread out, spread True. out from here. But I'm, I'm just the person that refused to leave. You know, aside having, you know, having to stay here for my family, I also love working in Enugu because. Uh, I've tr- it's not like I've not worked other places. I worked in Lagos, worked, yeah. uh, worked in US, worked in uh, UK, worked in South Africa, worked in um, um, uh, Freetown, Sierra Leone. Wow. Love <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, that's a lot. But I love Enugu. Okay. I love Enugu. So I've been able to produce all my major successful films from Enugu. Okay. So if you are thinking in a holistic sense, mm-hmm. you know, your audience, your audience can be anywhere in the world, then it doesn't really matter where you stay. For me, I chose Enugu. Yeah, that that's mm. that's key. Actually, it doesn't mm. matter where you no, are. It doesn't matter. But then again, <laughs> I'm really trying to like narrow things down to Nollywood. Okay. Yeah. So like, I I, I don't know if it's an Eastern thing, mm. or or would you say that Nollywood is not as unified as it ought to be? Would you say that it's thriving more in some parts of Nigeria than in some parts? <laughs> Eastern part, uh, I th- I think there is a lot of um, mm, unhealthy competition unhealthy. happening in, in the east. Mm-hmm. Do you understand where we should be channeled, channeling our competition towards uh, making our works creatively excellent. Do you understand? Yeah. We we are more personal on the challenges, and and that's not healthy for the industry. Okay, yeah. is it is it an Igbo man thing? <laughs> <laughs> You know, now, now, so well, 